Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're looking at a question from Ken Hepner, K0XHF. And um, he was able to salvage a battery from an automobile. Okay, so this battery is a car battery, which is different from a deep cycle battery. A car battery is rated by cold cranking amps, which is at a certain temperature, how many amps can it push through the starter motor? Because it's the amps that make the motor turn. The volts has to do with the amount of power being consumed, but it's those amps that are making the thing work. Okay, so um, the other kind of batteries, which are deep cycle, are meant to be sipped from. Um, if you have a 200 amp hour battery, um, you can draw, that's called the capacity, C, 200, um, 200 amp hours. If you take C and divide it by 10, that is about the maximum rate at which you want to take power out of the battery. That would be 20 amps, which would be perfect for uh, ham radio. That's about the right amount. So yes, a lot of people do run their stations with a battery. Now the problem with doing it with a car battery is a car battery is designed for an enormous surge of power going out and then spending most of the rest of its life either sitting or being recharged. So whereas a deep cycle battery, you can take a little out, put a little in, take a little out, put a little in. What eventually costs the life of a deep cycle battery is there are only so many full cycles that it can take, usually 200 to 300. So the way you get around that is you never take them down that far. You might take it, uh, lead acid would be 12.7 volts, fully charged and rested. Um, that's full charge. Uh, 12 volts after it's rested uh, is half charge. And you normally don't take a lead acid battery below half charge. Uh, in fact, on a car battery, if you take it down to the point where you cycled it down, you could actually destroy the battery. And I've done that more than once. So, especially with RV batteries that discharge in the RV, and we don't notice that it's going to freeze tonight, a fully discharged battery, the electrolyte is pure water. A fully charged battery, the electrolyte, is uh, sulfuric acid. And that's the way all the sulfur will end up being deposited on the plates when you completely discharge a battery. One of the problems getting that sulfur off, it's called, the problem is called sulfation. And you have to do things, anyway, you don't want to deeply discharge a car battery because you get to do that once and then you've ruined the battery. Okay, now, would it be wise of me to hook the radio to my battery? You certainly can do that. Or would it be better in the long run to charge the battery up and use an inverter to run 110 volt AC uh, reducing power supply to create proper and consistent 13.8 to 14.6 volts to the radio? 13.8, please. I am thinking of field day and other primarily portable type events, no mountains in Kansas, so no soda, just pota, and pea pota at construction sites after the workers go home. Okay, yes, I have been to Kansas, and I've been over in the western part where it has lots of gentle hills. It's actually kind of pretty. Um, central and western Kansas is about as flat as far as the eye can see. It, I remember one time crossing Nebraska, the panhandle of Nebraska vertically on a motorcycle. I've never seen anything so flat. We cranked it up to, oh, I don't know, a high speed. And it seemed like nothing was happening. You know, we heard the whine of the engine, but nothing was moving. 
out around us was completely flat. Anyway, here's what's going on. Okay, some radios, some, not all, some radios like this ICOM 7300 are good at working in a mobile environment. They'll take 13.8 volt DC plus or minus 15%, which gets you down below 12 volts. Okay, but if it's a, a, a rig like my uh, Yesu uh, FTDX 3000, will take 13.8 volt plus or minus 10%, and that does not get you down to 12 volts. So only when the battery is fully charged will the radio work. Now I tried this, my solar system, We've got some big batteries, solar batteries, and I've got a little repeater battery just under the desk here. And that repeater battery was allowing the voltage to drop below, um, let's see, 13.8 minus 1.38. Um, it's still above 12 volts. And I was wondering why the radio was having so much trouble good, with uh, what they call unpredictable. In other words, it crashed. Um, and I finally figured out it wanted a little higher voltage. So I bought a voltage booster. MFJ sells them. Uh, I believe Rig Expert sells them too. That will take whatever the battery puts out and convert it to 13.8. So it'll stay 13.8. I got one of those, put it between my battery and the radio. Problem went away. Okay, so those devices are still around. Now let's talk about charging that battery. Okay, to charge that battery, you want to take it up to anywhere between, and it depends on the type of battery, 14.1 to 14.4 volts. That's only three-tenths of a volt different. Okay, if you charge it at less than that voltage, you're not fully charging the battery. Okay, now if you use 13.8 from your power supply, to pull the battery up, you're actually bringing the battery above its resting, uh, what do they call it, trickle charge. Uh, trickle charge voltage is 13.3. So if you give it 13.8, okay, will it charge? Yes, it will charge. In fact, it will overcharge. And what happens to a battery that overcharges? It emits hydrogen gas and splatters sulfuric acid everywhere. It's just not something you want to deal with. Now, there are companies that make uh, what they often call a solar con controller or battery or power center, something like that. And you can hook together a solar panel, a battery, um, a regular power supply, and your radio, and the thing does its magic in there doesn't overcharge the battery, uses the battery when the main power goes down, and if there is solar power available, it will use that to charge the battery or run the radio. It's, they're marvelous little devices. MFJ sells one. I think Rig Expert sells one. There's a lot of them out there. They're a little pricey, so I haven't uh, experimented with one, but they do some really kind of neat and interesting things. So the bottom line here is, can you use an automobile battery for a one-time event like um, field day or something like that? And the answer, of course, is yes. Is this a good idea to do long-term? I don't think so, no. I would go with a deep cycle battery, which you can get from like interstate batteries or someplace like that, where they will put in a good, sturdy, uh, deep cycle batteries for you. They have them. And you can charge that with solar, etc. You need a solar charge controller and all that. But for short periods of time, you can certainly do what you're talking about here. Okay, I hope that's helped. I hope I haven't muddied the waters terribly. But your automobile battery is a great big charge and then rest for a while. The deep cycle battery is just there to provide a steady charge over a long period of time, and it takes usually equally long to charge it back up. That's why they're used for golf carts and things like that. They'll run all day, they charge at night. And by the way, golf cart batteries, if they're in good shape, make great power sources. Uh, two of them together, 
They're 6 volt usually. Two of them together would be your 12 volt battery. Okay, rambled on for long enough. There you have it. So until we next meet, 73.